I know that this is irrational, but I genuinely felt like this is something that I need my sitting chair for. Okay. Oh no! Oh no, I don't need any help. I'm totally, I'm totally fine. Oh my god. My sitting chair is like, girl, where you been? Oh It is not going to be perfect. Not even close. Do you love that I'm the just copy and paste of every other person that you've ever seen in your entire life? Do I have any original bones in my body? No. Have I ever had my own original thought? No, but I am the most excited I've ever been in my life to finally have my sitting chair. I confidently tell you that this is a very special occasion for two reasons. One, this is the first time I've ever had a functional piece of furniture inside of my house. Two, I am here to tell you the story. I've held on to this all year long, 365 days, just so I was confident that it was the truth, you know, just so I was sure of my story, just so I was getting all my ducks in a row. The story of how the most naturally lazy person you've ever met, the most wants to be horizontal person that you've ever met. I'm telling you, every time I get vertical, all I think about is how can I get to a place where I can be horizontal. How I have lost 55 pounds in the past 365 days. And if this is not the story that you wanna hear, this is not the story that you need to hear. I'm gonna keep it short, I'm gonna keep it simple, and I'm gonna keep it sweet, but it all started at the beginning of this year when I had realized that I had gained a lawsuit 35 and was suddenly 240 pounds. Cute, flip your hair. Oh. This was, in fact, her nightmare. Oh no, oh no. This was in fact the worst reality that I never thought would be a reality and suddenly was a reality, right? And at the beginning of this year, I was like, the only thing that I want for this entire year, if I go through this whole year and this is all I accomplish, I am going to go on my merry little way to get into the tippity tip tin tip top best shape of my entire life. The tippity tipped in tip top best shape of my life. Okay, okay alliteration. Okay rhyme class. Like, okay, I'm a scholar. Okay, I've unlocked a new portion of my brain that's suddenly blossoming poetry out the spurts of my mouth. Okay, okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to bring you to a very special place today, and that is the place where all of my hatred for all of this began, my very own middle school track. This is the place where I decided that I never wanted to run a single day in my life ever again. However, I've attempted a few videos in my life, one of which was last year where I thought I could run a mile every single day for 30 days, and I failed after like day four. Mile one, we're coming in at 11.33. By middle school standards, that is passing. I am fatigued, bitch. I haven't ran a single consecutive mile since then, but I thought, what better way to track your raw, real progress than to see how fast you can run a stupid mile. I've been waiting for the snow to melt, and it's just not melting, but someone shoveled this path off just for me, I guess. I love that it's just covered in shit, too. Uh, so here we are, we're gonna see how we do. I, of all the workouts I've done in the past year, running is not one of them. I don't know what to expect. I would honestly say that as long as it's better than my turtle like 11 minutes, that I'll be happy with that. I think when I was a kid, we used to run that way, counterclockwise. So I'm gonna go the other way and hope that it jinxes something. I'm gonna double check that this camera's going because no fucking way that I do this twice. Okay, we're going. Ah, not the AirPod in the snow. I might walk a lap and then start, I don't know. I changed my mind. I was gonna walk a lap and then I realized that I'm too lazy for that, so I'm just gonna start right here. Four times around. Uh, 
We have a solid, solid 804. I was hoping for under eight. My nose, oh my God. Oh my God, T-Pain, stop, brother. I can feel the snot going into my mouth. My chest is on fire. And also, I did the last lap with my shoes untied. So, why I tied my shoes beforehand? I don't know, seems like a major waste of time to me. God damn, that's hard. I just, okay. Oh my God, that is fucking brutal. <coughs> That was horrible. Oh, that sucked so bad. I can't even get over how bad it sucked. I am never doing that again. Oh my God, I just cannot for the life of me fathom someone that would wanna do this in their free time. And yet here I am doing it, so I don't know. Ugh. <coughs> so this is me today, but I thought I would show you where I started a year ago. The overarching theme is that you never really see how much progress you've made until you have something to compare it to. When I look at this video of me running a mile a year ago, you might be thinking, girl, you're not running. And to that I say, because I couldn't. So although I strongly believe that running should be reserved for torture only, within the past year I was able to cut three minutes off my mile time and believe it or not, I could actually run this time. So the question that really no one has the answer to is where do you begin? I used to fall apart Lose myself and give my heart away Come and go in shady places I feel obligated to tell you that my least favorite thing about myself is that I love to pretend that I don't drink that much and then as soon as I'm in the same room with someone, the first thing that I ask them is if they want to take a shot with me. It's taken 40 years, blood, sweat and tears. The old fashioned way, give me that sweet love, those warm up and kisses. Oh, will you are the love. Life has a quirky way. Circle breaks, we find I think that not knowing where to start is really the best place to be because all you have to do is just start. Every single year I do some sort of 30 day challenge and I was getting to the end of the year, started to go into panic mode of, oh my gosh, Morgan, we're getting to the end of the year and you haven't thought about what are you gonna do for your 30 day challenge? I'm going through the database in my brain. I'm like, okay, which of these do I like the best? Oh, I like rumble boxing the best. I walk in there and I say, ladies, I want a membership because every time I go, I get my ass handed to me. I'm doing this shit for 30 days and they're like, okay. And I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this for 30 days in a row. 30 day challenge. I do one of these every single year and my year just wouldn't feel complete without one. So I was like, we're getting to the end. You know, we're in the Burr months, 2020, whatever the hell it is, 2023 is coming nearing the end. Monday, October 30th, it's a Monday. I'm emotionally, physically, mentally, I'm not prepared, but I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna get there. I'm just gonna take day one for what it is, you know? And I feel pretty strong. Like sometimes I look at myself and I'm like, do I have muscles? And then I go to Olive Garden and I'm like, oh, no, I don't. Like, sometimes I feel like I look pretty strong and then I'm like, maybe not, you know? So here we go. Day one of boxing for 30 days. If I don't come out of this looking like the fucking rock, I don't know. <laughs> to catch my breath. The class was the upper body class, so it was all uh, like that, and like that, and like that, and like that. I'm sure there's more technical terms that I'm just a little too winded to think of. And these classes are crazy because no matter how many times I've been in my life, every time I go, I still think I'm gonna die, and I still think I'm gonna throw up at least once. This is my setup. I have these, um, little 
bimbo boxer gloves, a crusty water bottle that's been in my car for like days, didn't have anything else, so refilled it. On the way here, I had a prime energy drink, but I only drank half. The energy drink gets your heart rate like booming, and then once you start working out, it's double booming. So if I drink a whole one of these before the workout, sometimes I feel like I'm gonna have a little a little heart attacky. Emergency almonds that I was eating on the way here. Yeah, feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good for a Monday. Oh my God, you guys. It is 4.36 in the morning. There is a class at 5.15. If you think I'm the type of person that has ever been to a 5.15 a.m. workout class, I'm not. This is my first. This is my 5.15 a.m. workout virginity loss. And I'm feeling like it's a loss right now. I cannot give up on day two. That would be absolutely pathetic. Like, happy Halloween. I'm, I'm spooked. I'm scared for my life. Let me be clear, <laughs> I've never on at any given time of any given day wanted to do anything less in my entire life than go to this class right now. It is 5.55 p.m. and I'm gonna be honest with you, all day I was like, I don't think I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna make it to this thing. It's cold, it's getting dark, I have to pee, I still don't have toilets in my house. You know what, I'm gonna really miss the porta potty when it's gone. I don't know if I feel any sort of way yet on day four except for I'm exhausted, I'm a little cranky, I have a headache, and I'm really sore. But am I looking at myself in the mirror like, damn, I'm jacked? No, no. <laughs> My overthinking brain at this point is thinking, are these people thinking that I'm weird for coming every single day? Like, do they think I'm crazy? Do they think I'm having a manic episode? Do they think I'm having a breakdown? Do they think I just got broken up with? I don't know. Gonna take everything that lives inside of this brain, but we're gonna do it. I listen to Ariana Grande 34, 35 on the way there every single day. Every single day. You can see what's happening. 8.22 in the morning on a Saturday. Cheers to set today. I have almonds all in my teeth. You can see here my little almond stash. I actually feel decently better today, which is good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> I have a few observations from essentially what has been the first week, okay? Every time that I actually don't want to go to one of these classes, that is when I actually do the best. When I'm just ready, when I'm up and I'm like, let's do this. I'm ready for the damn thing. Mm -mm -mm, go team, you know, that's when I do the absolute fucking worst like today I thought I was gonna pass out. I don't know what's going on couldn't pay attention to save my life I just didn't know what was going on right but the days when I wake up and I'm like this is the worst Possible situation for what I could be doing right now, and I absolutely don't want to go. I hate it. No interest. That's when I do the best observation number two <laughs> Okay, because realistically, I don't want to say that I've had a lot of free time this year, but I like I live with my parents right now, right? While I'm waiting for this whole thing to get done. So I have a lot of time in my life where I'm like, I would really like to get out of the house. Okay, okay, but this is where it gets sticky. This is where it gets tricky. January of this year, I get on a scale for the first time in probably years. And I know that I've gained a significant amount of weight, right? Because none of my clothes fit, none of my anything is functioning right. I can't even walk up the stairs. I can't even walk to the damn elevator without feeling like I'm gonna die. Oh my God, I'm 240 pounds. How did this happen? What am I doing with my life? Where am I? How did I get here? Horrified, absolutely horrified. So that is when I was really like, okay, Morgan, it is time to pull it together. This is not funny anymore. This is not cute anymore. This is not ha ha, he he, ha ha, hello. We need to pull it together. Over the past, eight months i've lost that 40 pounds but what gets to my little itty bitty brain is now 40 45 pounds lighter i'm more self-conscious now and i'm more aware of like how i'm being perceived now and i'm more uncomfortable with people looking at me now versus when i was 240 pounds i didn't really care why does that happen? How does that happen? I don't know. I don't know if I was in denial with like where I was actually at. I think it's just an awareness thing. I don't know. I don't know. These aren't bad thoughts. 
these are just simply thoughts. We'll think about this a little more and then I'll get back to you. There is this little corner right here because there's no stair railings. It feels so good. It feels so good to put your hands right here, lift yourself up, let your feet hang and let your back. And then I do the other side. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it's time to do the thing that I hate most in the entire world, the actual pain and vein of my existence. I have to figure out what to eat for the day. I'm gonna be 80 years old and I'm still gonna be complaining about having to figure out what to feed myself. My way of shopping is what do I need today to survive for today, so. That's what we're doing. The overarching theme of this year is that every time I have a problem, instead of ignoring the problem, I now try to solve the problem. So my problem all of last week, right? Because I was working out every day, you know, and I was like, I know that there has to be a way to do this and not feel like garbage every day because I was feeling like hot garbage days three, four, five, six. I went on Dr. Google and I was like, Dr. Google, why do I feel like shit now that I started working out more? And Dr. Google was like, hey girl, um, you feel like shit probably because if you're training every single day, you need to be eating a lot more and you also need to be eating a lot more protein and drinking a lot more water, okay? Because I wasn't taking any of that into consideration. I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor. So, I thought I'd give you a little Trader Joe's haul of what I eat as a person that's trying to eat a lot more protein but also doesn't have a kitchen and also doesn't wanna cook anything. I know I go back and forth in this all the time and people will probably call me out for that but all the times in my life that I've attempted to be vegan, I think I just have a headache at all times so now that I'm working out so much, I have to eat protein. Never in my life did I think I'd be a person that just whipped out a beef stick and started eating it in the middle of the day, but here I am. Protein bar. I get these a lot because I really love cheese. These are the salami and provolone cheese. Turkey spinach Swiss wrap. I do these for dinner a lot. Black bean Monterey Jack burrito, Greek yogurt, more cheese, dark chocolate for when I get sad. I also got a coffee for today and a coffee for tomorrow. And I'm even more excited because LifeSum is sponsoring this video and they are all about wellness and creating the best version of yourself in 2024, which is exactly what I've been trying to do all year. And I think a lot of it is just figuring out what works for you. And I'm gonna tell you straight away, I don't track my calories. I could not care less in the world how many calories I'm eating or not eating. I kind of just eat whatever I feel like I need to eat to keep going throughout the day. Where LifeSum comes in handy for me is I'm trying to figure out how to eat a shit ton of protein. What I'm focusing on and what LifeSum is focusing on is wellness over everything. One, you can use it for what I use it for, which is to scan items in, and then you can see how much protein it has, how much protein you're eating in a day, all of the nutritional values. What I'm gonna tap into when I eventually have a kitchen in my life is they have a whole recipes tab where you can find so, so, so many amazing, healthy, fulfilling, just well-rounded recipes. They have different meal plans you can follow. It's not always about tracking your calories. Sometimes it's just about tracking your routine and your habits and building new, new strong foundations and healthy habits. So you can download the LifeSum app for free or you can use the link that will be in my description, which will be 55% off a premium subscription of LifeSum. I have all this food in front of me and the only thing that I wanna eat is the chocolate. And this is what my problem is, is I am a sugar addict. I am a sugar crackhead. Anyway, thank you so much to LifeSum for sponsoring this video and being an overarching supporter of my wellness journey. Sunday, I just got home from the seventh day of boxing. It's like the 25 days of Christmas, just a lot less cheerful and way more sweaty. It was actually pretty good. I have the intense desire to just hit things now and I don't know how to make it stop. Today I did a pretty balanced equation this week. I did two upper body workouts, two lower body workouts, three full body workouts. I will tell you, I do way better in the morning than I do at night, okay? All the 6 p.m. classes, maybe that's just not for me. I can feel the spaghetti shaking around in my stomach at that time and I don't like that. The other thing is my non-fitness related observation of the week. I think I've had a pretty productive week this week, more so than I usually do because if you're going to a workout class, right, and you're dripping sweat when you walk out, you're gonna wanna go home and you're gonna take a shower. Once I take a shower, I'm like, well, shit, now I'm gonna have to do my hair, I'm gonna have to do my makeup, once I do my hair, my makeup, I'm like, well, shit, now I'm already this far and I might as well get dressed. 
Maybe that's a key to life. Scientific observations. Anyway, I will see you tomorrow. I am eating my rice cake on the road and it is Monday and we are starting week two. Me and my rice cake and my full face of makeup because I didn't have time to take it off and my giant pimple. It was 70 degrees when I got here and the temperature is dropping tomorrow to snow. So now it's like 40 degrees. I'm half naked walking around the mall. So that's good. You might think, Morgan, what gives you the fucking audacity to walk around the mall half naked at seven? Oh, that's on the freaking other side of the car door. 7 p.m. And to that I say, after 10 days of boxing, I feel pretty good. My shoulders, my shoulders, I feel it. My shoulders, I don't know how much longer they're gonna be shouldering. I have been drinking these prime energy drinks every day, but I watched this doctor today on Instagram and he was like, if you drink an energy drink every day, your heart is literally gonna explode. And then I got all nervous and then I started panicking. If I'm only drinking half of one, is that okay? Is that okay, Dr. Instagram? I can feel myself rambling because I have so much energy now, which is why I like to do this in the morning because now it's 7.23 in, P in the p.m. in the p.m. And I feel like I have a whole nother day to live. But anyway, while we're in my car and I'm showing you what I have, my sweet friend and her mom got me this little red barn Christmas ornament to match my barn. So cute. How <laughs> dedicated I am to my 30 days endeavor is I keep getting short nails because with long nails, you can't get your nails in the boxing gloves and that is commitment, people. Is that a muscle or is that a, like a little flab formation? I don't know. <laughs> Riley really enjoyed the plane. I think on, what is this, day 12 of boxing, I'm gonna break my streak. I blame them. You, well, you could still go to a workout class and just sub it. I'm sure you burn like similar amount of calories. I have not been here in a long time, girl. This is gonna give me flashbacks to the Kardashian video. And I just gotta say, you know what? We've come a long way from, <laughs> from that time. I think I've done enough of these workouts at this point to accurately recreate something similar. We're just gonna try our best. This is a big girl. Surprisingly, fun fact. Ever since I was a kid, the left side of my body is significantly stronger than the right side of my body. I could not tell you why. Like if I was gonna fucking knock someone out, which I would never do, I'd be like, fuck. It wasn't boxing, but it was something and it humbled me greatly. This is how you practice your handstands before you go up and you do the half leg until you can go all the way and hold. I'm too scared to be that high. Oh, I do not go backwards. <laughs> oh. We are just having a nice beautiful day here. This homie is gonna start lifting weights and then we're gonna have a dinosaur on our hands. Stay something and we're making it. We're making it. <laughs> that was 60 minutes and it was excruciatingly difficult. 5.02 made it all the way back here. <laughs> oh, yes, today, what? What? I woke up today feeling kind of sick. I can feel something, something is circulating in my air lungs. I made it to class 
every day this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, today is Saturday. I was feeling it yesterday. I was so into it. I was like, ooh, I'm strong and I'm capable. This steaming, smoking hot in here, you know? The days vary so greatly on like how I feel going to each class. But last night I was feeling it. You know, I was like, I love boxing. I live, laugh, love hot boxing. I want to go to a hot boxing class every day for the rest of my life. Woke up today and I was like, oh my God, I, feel, I think I actually have died, seen Jesus, came back down to earth, and now I'm awake again. So tired today, my throat hurts. I remember when I was a kid going to school, when it would get to this time of year, I would always want to fake sick and anxiety would be like, I don't want to go to school today because it's freezing. So I think that my brain sometimes would be like, oh, you're just sick, you know, <laughs> I'm sick. My dad and my mom would be like, you have to get up, you have to take a shower, you have to get ready for school and then decide if you want to go to school or not. They're like, okay, you know what? I was being a little dramatic and I'm actually fine. Today I woke up and I was like, I'm sick. And in my brain, I was like, no, I'm not sick. I can't be sick. And then I went to boxing class. I was so dizzy. I felt like I was going to throw up. I go through phases where I work out and then phases where I sit on the couch for six months. As a person who is pretty much exclusively like a boutique fitness type of girl, I can't work out by myself. I try, I think about it, I start doing it, and then I'm like, I'm so bored, I have no direction, no one's watching me, I can't do this. So for someone like me, it's worth it to pay for like a boutique fitness type of environment. I've tried them all, I've been to them all. I have at one point in my life been obsessed with each and every one of them, minus Orange Theory. I fucking hate Orange Theory. I know people love it and I love that for you. You're a lot stronger than I. I just can't run on a treadmill. I can't do it. I don't wanna do it. I have no desire in the world to get better at it. Every time I look at a treadmill, I want to projectile vomit. I hate it. I hate when the fitness people are right, you know, cause we don't ever wanna hear it. We don't ever wanna listen to it. And all these people are like, you have to combine cardio and strength. And I'm like, shut up Jan, let me do whatever the hell I want. But then, you know, there comes a point in life and maybe this is me maturing and being like, wow, all these people out there that are like, Morgan, if you want to change your physical appearance, you need to combine cardio and strength and you need to think a little more cautiously about what you eat in a day. I start doing it and I'm like, oh my God, why is my whole body transforming before my eyes? Oh, wow, because maybe all these people who know what they're talking about are right. And that makes me want to punch my fist in a wall, but it's true. Okay, I, I'm going to shut up. That's my update. This is not something I want to do today. <laughs> my mom said that I can't give up today because I've already spent so much time doing this. I want to quit like a big fat quitter. They say that quitters never prosper, but I bet some do. I'm gonna call everyone and say, hey everyone, guess what? I'm a big fat quitter. One thing that I have learned is wearing pants that have like like joggers that have a string. You start moving and grooving all around, your leggings start to fall down your ass. So. If you have pants that you can make super tight that aren't gonna fall down, that's that's the key to success, but I don't know why I'm giving you keys to success because I don't know if I can do it today. <laughs> Thick socks. Shoes are very important. I feel like a literal crock pot of mashed potatoes. I would like to throw it out there that this is the most out of character shit ever. I have flown far, far away from myself and now looking back in the past month and a half, I've been to 44 boxing classes, 44. So the last time that I tried on any of these pairs of pants was February 27th. Spoiler alert, none of them were even remotely close to fitting. If there was a first, second, and third place, I came in 10th. Like we were not even close to the finish line on these, but I thought we could try them on today and see where we're at. As easy and fun as it is to blame the Kardashians for everything that goes wrong in our life, sometimes you just can't, and here I am in my little skimmy mixed skims. I want to say that it was Alicia Marie specifically. She said in a vlog or something that these specific pants were the best leather pants ever. So I went and I ordered them and I tried them on and I was like, you know what, Alicia Marie, I love you a lot, but I think you're a cold hard liar. And now that I'm the size that I once believed that I was, 
I think that she was telling the truth because these are actually really nice. These are very, very nice. My least favorite thing in the entire world about being a woman is that the front is always perfect and the back is a gaping highway to hell. I personally would be happy with one success, but we're going two for two. Another good American option. I feel like a crazy person right now. On the count of three for the Lord Jesus. Was Khloe Kardashian the villain of my life or was she actually just looking out ahead for me because she knew that I was gonna pull it together and she knew that a year from now these were gonna come in handy when I did no longer wanna buy new jeans? Glasses, bag, strap ourselves in. We're ready for the amusement park ride. I'm ready to go live life. I've always been convinced that I hated jeans, could not stand them. I was never gonna wear jeans unless you actually had something to my head. You were holding something over me, ready to blackmail me and send me to the CIA. I didn't wanna wear jeans, had no interest. If you actually find jeans that actually fit you and you could actually walk around, you know, like I could walk around, I could, I don't do much else other than that. I would be happy wearing these all day. This is so fun. These were my investment pieces that just took a year long of investment of me working out every single day for me to be able to wear my investment piece. These are the jeans that I wore in my last fitness transformation video, round three. Okay, we did the month transformation, gained a bunch of weight after that. Then we did the year transformation, here we are, same pair of jeans. Me in the past was really thinking of me in the future. I just didn't know when me in the future was gonna be able to pull it together, but here we are. Looser pants with like a tight fitting shirt. Same thing, you put on a little glasses, you put on a little bag, you have some little shoes, and I'm like, I could go anywhere under the sun. I could hang out with anyone. I could do anything. You want me to get on your roof and check out what's up there? I totally could. You wanna go to dinner? I totally could. I think that the biggest takeaway from this entire thing for me is that the ability to put on clothes that I have in my closet and know that they already fit and know that when I'm putting them on, I'm gonna feel happy in them and I could just throw something together really quick and I could go out the door and be perfectly fine all day. I think that was worth, that was worth every cent. Those warm up and kisses, oh, you are the love. Sing it, you are the love. I can show you how to start to find your way. I like the old fashioned way. Give me that sweet love. Those warm up and kisses, oh. What I can tell you after this year when I have suddenly, out of the literal depths of hell, become some sort of workout girl. I started the year at 240 pounds, I'm ending the year at 185 pounds, and this is what I can tell you. Number one, my titties absolutely gone. That was the first thing to go. Where have my titties gone? I don't know. I sent on a search team. I filed an FBI missing persons report. I had titties once upon a time. Now I don't. I understand. I understand that when people say they're sweating their tits off, they're not joking. They're not joking. And honestly, I'm kind of upset about it. I know. I'm mad about it. My skin has cleared almost completely. I can show you a picture of my skin at this time last year. I don't know if that's stress levels. I don't know if that's sweating every day. 
but working out every single day and really, really pulling together what I'm eating on most days, uh, my skin has completely cleared. I didn't, I didn't think I was the type of person that could ever have clear skin. I have to do laundry literally three times as much. This is what the people don't want to hear. It was not easy. It was actually, quite actually, the hardest thing that I've ever done in my entire life. A hygiene routine? Flawless. If you're sweating every day, you're showering every day. If you're showering every day, you're drying your hair every day. If you're drying your hair every day, you're getting ready every day. If you're getting ready every day, you're setting yourself up to maybe have a better chance at thriving. Hygiene routine? Flawless. I've never been so clean in my entire life. I've never been so scrubbed down, face washed, moisturizer on in my entire life. My social life is literally nothing because I'm no longer the type of person that will go and get blacked out multiple times a week for a good time. Do I have a social life? No. Am I a raging party animal fun time? No. Do people want to hang out with me because I'm so fun and exciting? No. No. Men at the gas station will most definitely whistle at you. This is the other thing that is really hard to admit to myself. I, my entire life, have blamed my genetics. I said my ancestors somewhere in my family tree fucked up. They fucked me over. They gave me big bones and fucking just way too much excess of everything. I blamed them. I blame my genetics for everything. My whole life, that's what I've done. And the cold, hard truth that I have come to realize that it wasn't, it wasn't the genetics. It wasn't the family tree. It wasn't my ancestors. The problem was fucking me. I love being able to walk up the stairs, which in the overall grand scheme of things makes everything worth it. And here's what I'm gonna tell you if you're gonna start your little rocky journey, you're not gonna think that you're seeing any changes in your life. You're not gonna think that you're seeing any changes in your body until six months from now, you look back and you're like, who the fuck is that? Who, the, who is that? That is not a picture of me. That is not a person that I know. That is not a person that I recognize. So if you think that all of the things that you're doing, because that's where I was getting really, really pissed off in the day. I was like, I'm doing all these things. I'm going out of my way to do all these things and I don't see a difference. Take so many pictures throughout the year of what you're doing because now that I look back, I'm like, give it a lot of time. You know, I was always given it like two weeks and after two weeks, I was like, I don't get this. I don't know why people do this. I don't want to do this anymore. I would give it a month and be like, eh, eh, eh. You gotta give, you gotta, you gotta give it a lot of time and just know Okay, you gotta give it a lot of time. And now that I've given it a lot of time, I look back and I'm like, okay, I really feel like I didn't accomplish much this year. The camera died at the very end, at the very end. I was gonna say that I could look back on this year and be like, you know what, did I accomplish all of my greatest hopes and dreams? No. I get myself back into tippity tipped in tip top shape like I wanted? Yes, and that is the accomplishment of the year. That is the takeaway of the year. And I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. For once in my life, here for all the people that say that all I ever do is complain. I'm happy with this. I'm happy, okay? I'm happy. Cut. I just wanted to say thank you so much to LifeSum for sponsoring this video. And thank you all for being such a big part of my life. I hope you had the best holiday and new year ever. And I truly hope that this is your best year yet. And I love you so, so much. Okay, bye.